Well, hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to rebuild carp number one. And uh, so with that in mind, I have purchased some kits to repair these uh, carbs. Uh, kits come with new jets, gaskets, and various other sundries. We've got two different kits here. This is a factory pro kit, uh, more expensive. Um, comes with instructions, various jets, different jets in the kit here, a few bolts. And it looks like a uh, enough bolts, new bolts for the bottom of the carbs. So it's got some good things in it that we need. This kit I got off eBay, and I'll put a link to the seller down below. And it's a Keister. Uh, the model number is KS0655NR. This kit um, I would say is probably in some ways more complete. It's got additional jets in it, it's got gaskets in it. Um, it's the needles are a little bit different. You can see here the factory pro has needles that look very much like the original Whereas this one has uh, uh, Looks like a uh, brass ones and not shaped quite the same either. So so uh, That's a little bit different in there as well so what we're going to do is probably take the best out of each kit and use the gaskets out of this one. The other ones will go into my spare parts inventory for other GSXRs. So there you have it. So that's the factory pro kit. Comes with instructions. Uh, they also have an excellent guide on uh, tuning, which they've also included here. And uh, this is the, uh, basically uh, some tuning centers that they have, et cetera, et cetera, there in California. Uh, the gentleman that runs this was very informative, a nice guy, and uh, this, so this is a very high quality kit. Comes with uh, various different things. Uh, is it the same? We're going to find out. We'll have a look and see. All right, folks, so here we have carb number one. So this is all the original factory parts. Carb number one was the first one we disassembled and cleaned. And so we'll dig out these parts here and have a look. Now I also have extra gaskets. These are the old gaskets, so we're going to uh, keep those separate. And some additional parts from another kit that I had. So we're gonna use sort of the best of all of it. Once the carb is rebuilt, then we will put it back into the bag and then assemble the whole set together. So floats were good, so we're happy with that. And again, if you remember, we gave this a very good clean. It's nice and clean now, and uh, so we're good to go. So I'm just going to get the manual, and we're going to follow it along step by step. Now these are the original parts for this uh, carburetor. This is not original, so I'm going to put that over here for now. And these original jets, uh, these cleaned up fairly nicely. I don't know if you can see this or not, but they cleaned up fairly well. But they are have been corroded and are old and a little rough on the inside. So I don't think we're going to reuse those. Based on the fact that we, I have new ones over here, uh, looks substantially nicer. Uh, holes look about the same size, I would say. Yep, pretty much this exact same jet. So having new ones, it makes more sense to install the new ones. So while we're here, let's compare that to the factory pro one. See if there's really any difference between them. So, factory pro one and the internet one, they look like they are pretty much identical. This one says 125 on it and this says 127.5. So the 125 is slightly smaller. That's the 125. Also in this kit is a second set. So this one, uh, looking on the fine print of this, this says 130. So these are a 130 jet, and these are 127.5. So 130 is the original size that was in this Suzuki, the Canadian Suzuki. So depending on um, your bike, uh, the difference is, is really small. I mean, we're talking 
really nothing that's very visible. But for this installation on this particular bike, I'm going to use the 130 ones, main jet. Now the factory pro kit does not come with washers, whereas this kit comes with a replacement washer and so on. Factory pro kit does not come with a needle jet either. And that was the reason I bought this other kit. This is a needle jet and it is to replace the original needle jet and it's going to slide up into this area here so we'll we'll start with that i think first there is a flat part on this uh, composite plastic tube here and on the needle jet you'll see a flat edge there and that has to slide up so it comes up this way that there so that's what we're going to do now so the plastic is here Put that in. There we go, it's in. Don't want to damage this, so it is a fragile piece. Be a little bit careful. But the back end of the toothbrush has driven it into position and it's now fully flush up there and it looks like it's fit perfectly in there, so that's good. There's the one that we want. So again, this is a 130 and it is going to go right in here. So we can thread that in there right now. These don't need to be super tight. Obviously tight enough that they're not going to come loose but super tight is not necessary. There we go, that's in there. So that's that, so that's the first one. Now on this bike, the needle is in good shape. This is the needle valve, and it has to be installed prior to the float. So we have a choice here. Um, the original cheaper kit that I got from Keister came with these. This one is a, um, of a generic one it would work uh, but it's not the same it's the same size but it's not quite the same it lacks this filter piece so we're not going to use it the uh, more advanced keister kit the one we just received uh, came with this one and this looks like a nice unit um, it has a filter on it a plastic filter they both are the identical in height they both look pretty much the same and I think they'll probably both do the same duty. Uh, so I'm gonna actually go with the new one because I want to keep this rebuilt. So this piece with the needle in it goes into here. So it's already got the O-ring installed. So it slides in pretty much like that is there's a very small screw that holds this in place. It's this one right here. It goes into this small hole, right here, and it screws down. This serves to hold the needle jet in place and sink it correctly. Again, not too tight. So the next one, we still have to put one in here and one in here. The uh, keister kit comes with a uh, pilot jet on it. And it looks like it says it's a 42.5. And this one also comes with new pilot jets. And these are 42.5 as well. So I don't think there's really any difference between them. The originals. Uh, came fairly clean. They could be reused. I'm going to put them in the bag and we're going to use the one out of the Factory Pro for this one. So we'll use those. So there's a 42.5 and it should go in here. This is where it should go.
So that's done. So this hole, as I mentioned before, I call this the idle jet. The screw that goes in here, we use it to adjust the idle. And, uh, and we might as well put that in actually right now. Idle jet is this piece right here. And the one that we have from the original carburetor is in perfect condition. So we're going to use it, but we need a washer and a gasket for that and a spring. The Kickster kit does come with that. The original springs, I have them here, but we don't need it. So we're gonna use this spring right now. There's a new spring and uh, a new gasket and a new washer. And they also include a new clip, which would be on the uh, needle. Let's get that out of here. So we'll take these out of this little bag. This really is a very good kit. It's very comprehensive and it's actually all you need. You don't need any other kit at this time. So let's drop the O-ring in there. It's in there. The gloves a little tighter. Now we want to make sure the O-ring is pretty much in there correctly. So we're just going to make sure it's in nice and flat. It's not tilted so it doesn't get torqued down into a tilted position. And now it appears to be flat. Next thing in is the washer. Washer goes in, and again, same sort of thing. We want to just make sure it's flat. And it's in there nice and flat now. So the spring can go in. So the spring sits on the uh, idle jet, as I call it, like that. And it goes into that same hole. So we'll put the spring in first. We'll put that piece in. And then this screws down. This is screwing in nice and easily now, so I know it's in correct position, not meeting any resistance to speak of. Now looking on previous carbs that I've had floating around, as this screws down, you'll see some threads inside become evident as you screw it down. Most of the carbs I've seen, it looks to be about four threads in to get the correct idle. These will have to be adjusted when it's on the bike. Okay, so we're missing the needle. Here's the new needle that goes in here. So this is a little bit different here. This is carb number three. This controls the sort of the master setup for the whole thing. So we've got the needle. We've got the pilot jet. We've got the main jet. So we're good there. We've got the 130 installed. That's good. So we're now ready to install the floats. They're over here. So I'll take those out of this. Again, I was lucky with these carburetors, uh, mostly because the bike does not have very many kilometers on it. But the floats don't leak, they're all in good shape, so that's great news. So, again, the floats, oh, we lost this again. Let's put this in here. Let's do this the correct way first. So these go in here, and we use the pin to drive them home. Place the floats in position as shown and insert the pin. The pin will need to be driven into place using a small punch and a hammer. The punch should have a flat end. Lightly tap it into place, not hard. You don't want to damage the carburetors. Check it frequently to make sure that you're not uh, overdoing it. It doesn't hurt to tap it a couple more times just to make sure it's driven into position completely. Again, recheck it if it's not quite there, a couple of taps to drive it home. Light taps only. For this, the floats should move freely, and if they do, they're in the correct position. So we have uh, put this in, and we now need to check the height. Height is checked on this side, from the middle. I don't know if you can see it right here, but I'll try to show you. On each of these carbs is a little square right here and it says to check it from the middle of the square to the top of the float. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll set it there, put this roughly into position and 14.6 millimeters, give or take a bit is what we're looking for. This one's ever so slightly low. So we're just going to lift this up they're really close. It's probably within limits. Give that a bit of a push. And we'll check it now. 
I think it might be too much now. That is exactly 14.6 millimeters. Perfect. So that's set up the way I want it. So now that this side of it's done, we can put on the top or the bottom. This is the float bowl. And again, as we've seen, uh, there's a gasket. This is a new one. And it goes in the groove. So press it in before you put it on. And it's got to be sitting nice and flush in there. If you press it in, it'll stay in there. So like so. There it is. See? It won't come out. So, oh, we're losing light. Have to recharge the batteries. This now goes on just like this. So this goes on here in this position. You can see on this side of the carburetor, it matches up with the shape along here. So we will put these four screws in. This stuff I recommend hand tightening. Uh, you're screwing into aluminum with a steel screw, so I do recommend doing it by hand. That way you can get a good feel for it. It's easily stripped. Make sure the screw's going in the correct way. And there it is. So, carb number three. So next, we have to install this jet here. And this is pilot air jet. And it's a small screw. And we're using the one out of here. And this is a 150. So I have one left of those. That's correct. So we'll install this right now. It goes into this small hole right here. Get it started. Correct bit. Again, you want to be careful screwing these in. You want to make sure they're in threaded correctly. And you shouldn't really res re receive any resistance when you're turning it in. It doesn't need to be super tight, just tight. So that it doesn't vibrate loose. So next, we're going to have a look at the diaphragm. Diaphragm is, again, in very good condition. A little bit of slight wear there. Doesn't really feel any thinner. A couple of spots. This is probably the weakest one right now. But I think it's going to work. I think it'll be okay. So we'll put it in and give it a go. So this is the needle. So the small, smaller plastic piece goes right there. The larger plastic piece, once it's sitting in the inside the diaphragm, will sit on it just like this. So that's how they work. And then the spring sits against that. So again, this goes in the diaphragm. It's important that these pieces are all in correctly. Otherwise, this won't work. There we go. So that's in there. Set it gently down. And we need our lid. That's number four. We're looking for number three. This, if you remember, we painted. The spring, which is right here, is slightly tighter on one end. And that one end goes right there. So then, that's that set up. 
So again, this, as I have shown before, first we insert this. You make sure the needle drops correctly into the needle jet. The needle has to go in there correctly and the slide goes down. So once it's in, position the rubber. Now you'll notice on the shape of this, there's a little lip here where it goes in and a lip on the rubber. So you push these down and make sure this goes into position. This is a little bit tricky. You want to make sure it's flat. It's got to be in there nice and flat. Sometimes it wants to kind of roll over on you a little bit, but usually it takes a little, f a few, few trips around to get it in position correctly. You may need to twist it slightly. Sometimes it can become a little twisted on the, uh, on the uh, assembly. So there we go, let's put it back in. Make sure it's in there nice and flat. So that's the diaphragm. This is all the way in. Just make sure it's in there nice and flat. As you can see. So it's in there. It's not quite correctly in there, so that's a bit of a problem. That can be caused by this rubber just moving slightly in this holder. So a little bit of twisting should reposition it back correctly. So we'll redo this again. Make sure it's in there. There we go. And it looks like it's well positioned now, so we'll put it in the correct position. There we go. Looks like we have gone a little bit too far there. Let's make sure it's just nice and centered. There we are. Perfect. Okay, we go all the way around. And it's in there correctly now. Make sure it's nice and flat. It is. So, there we have the diaphragm correctly installed. As you can see down here, there's the little lip showing you the correct way to put it in. That's in place. And the rubber is holding in position correctly. So now we've installed the spring on our top here. And the spring needs to just go gently straight down in here, like so. Let's just double check that. Everything's in place correctly. The first bolt in. So we need a different bit. Just stack this up for now until we get it positioned 100% correctly. It's so oh, no. There it is. So, that's the finished carburetor. Top has been painted. And we'll check the operation of this. And that's operating correctly. Everything looks good there. So the last thing that we have left to install is the choke. Choke goes right in this hole right here. So we need the choke. This is the choke mechanism. And it just goes straight in there. There's no O-rings or anything. So it just drops right in and screws into place like so. There's that. 
need to tighten this down. So we need to tighten down this choke and I can't get a wrench in there so I found just the needle nose. It's plastic so it doesn't need too much anyways and that's it. So now we have a finished car. The choke is in place, it's sprung. These are the different vacuum and gasoline. This is where gas comes in. This is vacuum. So that's it for that. So we've installed, there we've got the idle air jet there. The idle air jet I call that, idle jet. And this and this. So this is all turning nicely. And once these are, uh, these will be installed uh, very shortly because we're going to start the engine hopefully uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, test these out, make sure they work. So you can have a look at this. This is carburetor number three finished. And the process using the Dawn and the uh, ultrasonic cleaner works really, really well. Got the unit nice and clean. A um, little bit of paint on the top there and we're good to go. So carburetor number three is done. So it goes back into its bag with the two little rubbers. Been sourcing a replacement for these. These are uh, hard to find, these little things. Luckily, these ones are in pretty good shape, so I think I can probably reuse them there. Still, as you can see, they're still pliable. So I, I probably will reuse those for now. These carbs will go back in. We will start the bike, run it, heat cycle it, and then uh, again, complete the disassembly so that we can uh, give the frame a clean and the swimmer and everything else. So.